I know with interest in your words how you define conservatism and particularly your statements about neocons and later big government conservatives. Does this mean a reading out of the conservative movement of certain people? For example, the neocon in the list that you ticked off of neocons, you don't mention John Bolton, the UN ambassador. He's, he's, he's mentioned in the book, John. Okay, who is a hero to many conservatives. But also, when you talk about big government conservatism, I first heard the term when Jack Kemp was on the scene, who remains a revered figure in the conservative movement. Are you reading out some people who were components of the post-war conservative? Movement? I don't. I don't put Jack Kemp at all in, uh, in 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 that latter group you describe, and I'll be happy to talk about that. Jack, uh, in fact, one of the things I talk about in the book is the Kemp Roth Job Creation Act, uh, uh, which we got passed in 1981 uh, across the board. In that case. Uh, across the board uh, tax cuts for individuals and businesses designed to spur capital investment, savings, and job creation in the United States. And it worked. It took two years. What bothers me today is I've been talking about extensively uh, as chairman of the Texas Workforce Commission is I don't see any significant <coughs> initiative to create uh, private sector jobs here in the U.S. and I talk extensively in that. So I put Jack Kemp, not only was Jack a friend, but I think he, you know, I don't agree with every, I, I, I think, as I point out in the book, where I disagreed with Jack is when you're cutting taxes, you also have to address the spending side, and I, I think he tended to, um, uh, tended to uh, ignore that to a degree, but we do have to address the spending side. You cannot address these unsustainable deficits. You cannot be as dependent as we are on the Chinese, Japanese, and others to buy our dollars. So that's issue one. With respect to John Bolton, I've known John since the uh, uh, days of the Reagan administration. Um, I have nothing personal uh, uh, against John, but uh, I, I strongly disagree with his influence uh, within the, uh, the Bush administration. I think in particular, it's rather ironic, Talk, I mentioned it in the book, there were many of us who volunteered and who served in Vietnam, many of my generation. And I think we learn through that service, particularly young soldiers, either enlisted or officers, the law of unintended consequences, how things can go awry when you send young Americans overseas. And I was troubled at the time I was in Vietnam and I went in with one view before I went in and I came out with a very different view after serving in Vietnam, and I think others like Chuck Hagel and Jim Webb and, and mutual friends of mine on both sides of the political aisle uh, also saw the law of unintended consequences in that conflict. But what troubled me at the time was there was this sort of arrogant crowd in Washington, D.C., uh, the McNamara's uh, whiz kids, if you will. Uh, they all had high IQs. They all were very brilliant and they were abstract intellectuals who uh, knew a lot, unfortunately a lot that wasn't true. And I really compare, with all due respect, uh, Paul Wolfowitz, John Bolton, and many others who kept pushing uh, this notion that military interventionism in the Middle East uh, was uh, important, worthwhile, and um, uh, we were going to help uh, create democracy in the Middle East. I think they were dead wrong. And, and anybody who, and the sad thing in the Bush administration, there were very few people in key positions who had any military experience. Most of those guys uh, managed to avoid any military service during the Vietnam era, uh, much less, I mean, the, nor did they, uh, I, I can't think of one key policy maker who kept pushing uh, hard for military intervention in Iraq who served in Vietnam. Uh, there were a lot of people in the Reagan administration who had been World War II veterans, uh, Korean War veterans, or Vietnam veterans. I can't name one in a key position in the, in the George W. Bush administration, except three of them who were over at the Department of State who had reservations about our policy in Iraq, who had served in Vietnam, uh, Colin Powell, Richard Armitage, and Larry Wilkerson. And they all uh, had reservations, and in effect, Bolton was Dick Cheney's guy at the Department of State. But I really believe that the vice president was de facto uh, 
a president uh, of uh, foreign policy during the first time, and um, I put I put Bolton in in the camp of people who uh, who seem to believe that uh, you know the answer is uh, you know is uh, military intervention throughout the Middle East. And Ronald Reagan, as I point out in my book, he says his biggest mistake uh, was when he sent troops into Lebanon.